see how you're supposed to laugh. He's insanely funny, no pressure, but uh, what a blessing. So we're just so honored to have you here. Come on up, brother. Give him a good hand this morning. We want to just pray for him. So go ahead, y'all stretch your hands toward him as he's going to bring the word this morning. Father, we're so thankful for Elijah. Father, we're so thankful for how you shine through him, God, and his awesome heart, his love for people, Father God. We just thank you for those gifts. They're expanding and growing and multiplying, Father, and you just touch his heart, his beautiful kids, Father. We're so blessed to have him here today. We thank you that you just flow through him. Bless our brother in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, all right. A lively bunch. My kind of crowd right here. Y'all, if you're going to pray for me, specifically pray for my hair. Because I wasn't expecting the drizzle we had this morning. And in the hotel room, I went from the Nikki Six, to, I stepped outside to the Prince and Revolution. You know what I'm saying? Like it was immediately, it was like, Vroom, like that. So. <laughs> You be quiet. <laughs> oh, man, we're going to have fun today. I, I thank everyone for um, coming to church today, and, uh, and we're going to, let's do one more word of prayer. Father God, help us. Amen. I was, in, I was in Wichita Falls, Texas. This was a few years ago. I was in Wichita Falls, Texas, and I'm standing in the Starbucks because my, my, my hotel um, in the same parking lot, it didn't have... Um, it didn't have the coffee maker. You know the little individual coffee maker thing? Uh, it didn't have, well, it had, it had a coffee maker, but it didn't have enough of the sweeteners uh, for my, like, I like, um, I'm old school. I do like black coffee, but, but if, I, if I can doll it up, I want to doll it up. You know, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to prove I'm, my manlyhood here. I like a good tasting coffee. And so I, I, I saw the Starbucks. I'm not a huge fan of Starbucks. Um, for a few reasons, nothing like, I, I'm not taking some kind of spiritual stance against Starbucks. Um, what, what my reasoning is, is because um, the way that they make you pronounce uh, some of the things there. Like, uh, because, like, if, if you're in, they've got their own language there. I just, I just want to be able to say small, medium, or large. That's what I, without someone acting like they don't understand. You... There was a time you didn't work at Starbucks and you used this same terminology. But now, like when you, what's a small called at, at Starbucks? Anyone? Tall. Why would that make sense? That doesn't make sense in any other reference. You can't say, uh, oh yeah, you know what, you need to talk to that, um, that tall gentleman over there. They're like, I don't see him, he's down there. Like, you, that's... The main one, though, that I have an issue with is is um, is the medium. What what is it? Grande. You hear how you're pronouncing that? Grande, which is fine for you. I am of Hispanic descent, and if you if you have any kind of and everyone does of 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 a hint of ethnicity of any sort to you, whenever you see that ethnicity represented on a menu you all of a sudden become uh, 100%. Like if you have 2% Italian to you, and you know that you have 2% Italian to you, when you're in an Italian restaurant, you're, you're going to go, um, you know what, I think I'm going to take a, uh, the spaghetti and the meatball. You know, like you, you, you overemphasize that. So for me to look at another person and say, uh, yes, I'd like, a, I'd like a grande, I feel like my ancestors from beyond are looking down, mijo, what have you become? You know, because I, I want to go in there, what are they, I want a grande, that's what I want. But it scares them. We're getting to a message, I promise you, that's in this. Uh, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm there at the Starbucks, waiting to, to order a, uh, a light roast. Um, does anyone know what the light roast is called? Blonde, exactly. You know how awkward it is. For me, a grown man, to look at another person across the counter and say, uh, yes, I'd like a uh, grande blonde. Like, that's <laughs> semi-inappropriate, you know? Like, one time I, I told a guy, I said, I'd like a tall blonde, and he looked back and goes, wouldn't we all, man? I was like, hey, easy. I don't know your life. So I'm at the Starbucks, 
because I'm disgruntled in the hotel. I just want a cup of coffee before I go. I'm going to a, 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 a church to speak that morning, and and um, and I'm standing in the line. Starbucks makes their lines uh, where it's there's so minimal space that it feels like that mosh pit that you mentioned earlier. It feels like you're in a like you, it's 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 a perception of there's so many people here, even if there's only three people there. And, and this one, there, there was some tables right here, and this gentleman, I noticed this, this is a gentleman, um, he was an elder gentleman, I'm going to say he was in his mid-70s, you know, maybe 80s, and, and he was looking back at me, and he was just, he was doing, now remember, this, this is you, 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 okay, so this is the only way you're really going to retain this. Pretend you are me in this story. That's the only way this is going to come across the right way, and you'll really feel what I felt. He's looking back, and, and he's looking at you, okay? Now, and he's going like this, he's going... And remember, I haven't even had coffee yet. You know what I'm saying? And he's like, and finally he breaks the silence after about three minutes. Three minutes is a long time to be stared at like that, you know? And I'm stro scrolling through my mind. I'm like, do I owe anyone money here in Wichita Falls? What's this guy? And, and he goes like this. He says, he's a, he breaks the silence. Remember, you are me. You're me right now, okay? The, he's saying this to you. He says this. He goes, who are you supposed to be? Romans 12, 2 says this. It says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So that way you can prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay? Um, so when he says, who are you supposed to be? Uh, my mind, just me, my natural self, my mind scrolls back to all the times when I could clearly answer with confidence and with boldness who it is I'm supposed to be. But this scripture uh, introduces the concept that perhaps my thinking hasn't been expanded enough for me to walk in who it is I'm really supposed to be in life. See, it says... Don't be conformed to this world. Now, when I hear that, here's, uh, because I was kind of raised in, in church culture, um, my, my, my parents didn't get saved until I was about 12 years old, but my nana, my little Mexican nana, she was a heroin addict for 17 years and got delivered, and she, and she, she became, um, she became uh, what I would call uh, Lord God saved. Lord God saved is um, in Hispanic culture. She's a little Mexican, uh, four foot eight woman, and she's. Um, you can tell how how hard um, their testimony is based off the amount of Lord Gods in the prayer when they're pray like my nana's prayer would be Lord God, and we just called fire, Lord God, down from heaven, Lord God, and Lord God, we're just like it's a bunch of Lord Gods. You know, the more Lord Gods, the the better the testimony. You know, like the the more it's kind of like you know Father God with the whites. Um, so. You just count them up. You know, oh, you know, hard pass. And 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 so so my nana, she when I was little bitty, she used to drag us to these revivals here, here in Central Arkansas. And here's the problem with the revivals during that time. This was the this was the early to mid '80s. The revivals in that time, it was always the evangelist came in with his tent, his big white tent, a perfectly good church building, 20 feet from the tent, with air conditioning. And it's 120, you guys know how it is in the summer here. It's a hot, that mosquito, it's, it's horrible. We, all we have to do is just go right there. But the evangelist wants to, you know, he wants to preach about end times right here. And so, so, so in the, and then it would always be, it would always, this would happen every time. Because my nana would drag, she would, mijo, come on, you're going to, and she would just grab me, mijo, you're going to go to the revival. You're not going to go to hell like your parents. Let's go. And she, you didn't talk back. And she would take me, and 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 she she you know the, it, no matter no matter what speaker it was, and I was just a kid, just a little stuttering kid. I wanted to eat chips and play with my GI Joes, and and I'm trying to mind my own business. And every time, 
every time. It'd always be the, it'd always be the, um, it, there was like a requirement in ministry back then where you had to, um, uh, most of the ministers, you, you had to, uh, you, you had to sound like this, like that. You had to have a, and it, and it had to be something about, and God is going to come and get you in the book of Revelation. And then they, there was this big thing that they, like that, like that. I just wanted to, I wanted to poke that thing. That's what I want. I'm six years old. And they would always, <laughs> they would always, they'd always call me up, like, young man, come up here. And I, I didn't want to come up there. I was terrified. I'd never, listen, I know in this, in, in this room and in this church, we're, we're familiar with the terminology Holy Ghost. I understand that now. But when I was six years old, when my nana is, nana, what's happening? Mijo, that's the Holy Ghost. There's a ghost in here. I didn't know what was going on. And, Young man, come up here. And they would always say the same thing. God is going to use you to speak to the nations every time. Well, that conflicted with what I thought was going to happen in my life. Because if you were to ask me at that time, who are you supposed to be? Well, my answer would have been a superhero. That's, that's, that's who I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to, bum, bum, that's who I'm supposed to be. I'm talking about God using me to speak to the nations. But I was raised in this church culture, and so when I, when I would hear this scripture, don't be conformed to this world, I, my mind would immediately think that's talking about the unchurched world, the people who don't know God, who don't have a relationship with God, the unchurched. The, and and the, not just the unchurched, but the extreme of the unchurched, you know, the crazies out there. That's what I thought this meant. But really, what he's saying here is that we're not to be conformed to anything else in this world other than what God has created us individually for. Uh, meaning this, that someone can be right on track with exactly who God called them to be in their life at that time. And I can look at them and admire them. And, and I could say, man, I, 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 oh, I want to be like that. And the problem with that is not the admiration. The problem with that is the duplication. Uh, meaning this, if, if, this if, if this whole thing were a puzzle, you know, you go to the Walmarts and you see the puzzles, you know, the 500-piece puzzle. On this earth right now, there's about 8 billion people. So let's just say the puzzle consisted of 8 billion pieces, okay? Of those 8 billion pieces, you are one. I'm another, okay? That's just right now. We're not talking about throughout history of all mankind. That's how big the puzzle actually is. But let's just say right now. So the problem is, when I start looking at another piece of the puzzle with admiration so much that I want to duplicate that piece of the puzzle, the problem is I can spend my entire life. Like, I, I, would, love, I would love to be on the worship team up here, but that's not my lane. I can try, I can try and try and try. The bass player was rocking it this morning. I could try so, yes, where are you at? Where's the bass player? Yes. I could, there was an aggression to it too. You know, like, just like a, striking that last, just, just leaving it, boom, like just, just walking away. You know, just, just, a, just laying the bass down at times and just walking, taking a sip of coffee, coming back and getting it. Yeah, I, I, but here's the deal. If I admire that, which there's nothing wrong with that, and, and, and I want that so much in my life, the problem is there's a, an image on my life that I'm supposed to project. Now, you know how a puzzle works. There's a big image on it, and then the image is broken down into a bunch of pieces. Genesis 126 and 127 says this. It says, God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him, both male and female, he created them. Two words image in there. The first one translates down, if you do the study on it, the first one translates down to God created man in his image. That word translates down to imagination. God was thinking this through. He was imagining every piece of the puzzle he would ever use in humankind. Okay, from the very beginning. So there's, you may think you were an accident. You weren't an accident. You may have been a surprise. I got three surprises at my house. Okay, but it wasn't, it wasn't an accident. God thought this thing through. 
He knew every, He knew where he would place you. He knew the family he would place you in. He knew the time he would place you in. Because there's a lot of people who you, you, if we ask, you know, if you could pick any time frame, any era to be in, what would you, what would you prefer? And people are like, oh, I'd love to live back in the Bible days. No, you wouldn't. Because you know what you love? Toilets that flush. <laughs> I'd like to be in the old western days. Hmm. Didn't see any horses out there today. You drove a vehicle with windshield wipers. With the, you, you know what you love in the hot summer? Air conditioning. See, there's something on your life and about the image that's on your life and the piece of the puzzle and when, he was ch- when you were chosen to be released into this atmosphere that could only work in this generation. What if, what if God stuck me in another generation? I'm a comic. Like, you know, I would get burnt at the stake. <laughs> we have the hunters and the gatherers. <laughs> we have the, thank you for the assistance. <laughs> you know, hunters and gatherers and then the, the town idiot over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, but, th- but the same thing applies to your life. You were placed here for a very specific reason during this time. And so that's why you can't take your life so lightly that you don't make a difference. You may not see the end result yet because you're in the caterpillar stage, but that doesn't mean the whole thing's not going to transform over time and every part of the journey was so valuable and needed in your life. Don't be conformed to this world. don't, don't, Don't take everyone else's part and assume that you need to become them. Because what happens, you can spend your whole life and effectively remove the image. See, and that's that whole image of Christ, the the second word image, it translates down to DNA. And so God created man first in his imagination, and then his very DNA, his very structure. And so then he placed the image, and that's, that's why it's important to be a part of a local church. Why? Because... The unchurched world is looking for pieces of the puzzle that are together, and when they look at that, the more people we have in place, together, fitly joined together, not the same, but we connect in different ways. And this this connection is going to make sense for you, not over here. This connection makes sense for me over here. doesn't have to, we don't even have to like each other. We don't. It's great if we do. It's it's great. And, And if you're the reason no one likes you, maybe make some adjustments, but... But, but the thing is, we fit in our own way. We have our own puzzle pieces. And when the unchurched world looks at us, they should see us connected. And there should be an image that they see and say, oh, that's what God looks like. Not just one of us, but all of us joined together, fitly joined together. And then you can start to see, oh, now it makes sense. When they work together, when there's not division among the churches, when, when th- that's what makes sense. That looks like God. Whether I believe in him or not, that's what I would perceive him to look like. Does that make sense? And that only happens, though, if we're not conformed to everybody else. But we're transformed. Remember that movie Transformers? When I was a little, when I was a kid, we had the cartoon. And we had that song, Transformers, more than meets the eye. That's how it was. We had little Hot Wheels like cars. And the Hot Wheels cars, you could, you, someone greater, bigger than the Hot Wheels cars could come along and start. You would think that that was just, you know, you thought it was just a car and that's a fender. But, but all of a sudden, it's, a, it's an arm of a warrior. Like, oh, look at that. And when the arm of the warrior comes out, when you put it on the track, it doesn't, it doesn't have the ability to... to to move the way it used to. Now it's, it's slightly, and that's why some, some of us, we start um, trying to operate in the way we used to operate before we knew things about God and we knew his understanding. We knew revelation that we're supposed to apply to our life because when that happens, then <laughs> this happens. And then we're like, well, I'm gonna go back here and try what I used to do. And we're like, Arr. doesn't work like that anymore. Because there's something greater coming out of us. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by one thing and one thing only. The way we think. The renewing of our mind. Here's the problem with this scripture that I think God maybe didn't think through. (laughs) This scripture implies that we don't know it all. 
but we imply that we do. Don't make me pull up your Facebook posts. <laughs> we are determined that we are right. We are correct. We are, we are convinced of it. And we were convinced of it when we were seven. And we were convinced of it when we were 15. And we were convinced, of, you remember that? We were convinced of it at the beginning of that relationship. We were, we, we're, we're constantly convinced that we are right, but this scripture indicates that we don't have all the details yet. And the only way that we will know the full story and the full picture is that we are constantly being transformed by the difference in the way that we think now than it, than it was before. That's why we get in the Word. That's why we have a relationship with God. That's why we, get, we, we absorb teachings. That's why. Why? Because we're wanting to be stretched and transformed so that we, we can see our lives start to walk out the good, the acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Let's go back to Starbucks. Who are you supposed to be? Well, my mind immediately thought, oh, I mean... I don't, know if, I don't know if he's wanting a real answer here, but I think in cartoons. Like, that's how my brain operates. And I thought of all the times that I could, I could clearly, clearly give a, give a solid answer. First time, superhero. Um, but interesting, when Philip introduced me, I'm sorry, Bishop Philip, <laughs> introduced me today, he didn't say, you've seen him on the news flying over with his superpowers, blowing out the California fires. <laughs> nah, it's just Elijah Tyndall. Just Elijah Tyndall. Said some not very kind things, but by the name Elijah. Not superhero Elijah. I didn't fly. <laughs> I didn't do the cool thing. It was just, just Elijah it didn't work out the way I thought it was really going to work out. Yet I, 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 was, I wasn't insincere about me thinking I was going to be a superhero. I was sincere about that when, at that time in my life. Now, here, here's what was not happening. God was not in heaven looking down from his throne going, this, he doesn't get it. He wasn't aggravated at six-year-old Elijah. He wasn't mad at me for not understanding the full picture of what would happen over my lifespan. He wasn't, he wasn't calling David, David, come look at this guy. David, put the harp down. Come look at this. He just doesn't get... God wasn't upset that I didn't understand the full thing at that time in my life. Pretty simple, right? Let me introduce this thought. God's not upset at you for not understanding and having clearly defined to others exactly something about you, exactly what you defined yourself as, who you're supposed to be, and then maybe it didn't work out the way you thought. And, and then you walk away embarrassed, you walk away in shame, you walk away with a sense of guilt, but God didn't put any of that on you. That's, that's not him. He was never upset at you for not understanding all the details. You know what? You didn't even ask to be here. None of us did. It was part of his plan. We, 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 didn't, we, didn't, we weren't up in heaven going, God, send me down now. We weren't doing that. God put us here. He chose when we would be released. He knew there would be issues. He knew there would be struggles. He knew all that. So he pre-planned the whole thing and gave us routes of escape and refuge and restoration. But he knew. And he's never left us or forsaken us in this whole thing. He's not mad at Who are you supposed to be? Well, the next time I could answer that clearly was when I was 13. I heard a, a type of music on the radio I'd never heard before. Here in central Arkansas, on a station, uh, 88.3 KABF, community radio. Sundays from 12 noon to 3 o'clock, there was something called rap music. Maybe you've heard of it. Well, back then, this was the mid-80s. I'd never, I'd never heard anything like this. And this was glorious to my ears. This wasn't the rap music of today. This was back in the... It was that. And I was like, who? What is this? 
What's happening right now? Now, you got to understand, I was, a, I was a shy, skinny, stuttering young child. I didn't want to stand out in any way. I was, I was t- timid. I was bullied. I was terrified of everything. And when I heard this, something started, something started changing in me. And, and I, I, uh, I, I immediately started trying to mimic and starting, started to try to, and I got myself involved in um, things called rap battles. Mabelville Junior High in the parking lot every day at lunchtime. I was no longer Elijah Tyndall. I changed my name. My name now was E.T. Fresh. <laughs> E.T. Fresh. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was me. I was in a rap crew. My, my, my partners were Audacious Roy. <laughs> Audacious Roy was in charge of the beatbox, and I was in charge of the rapping. He'd rap sometimes. Audacious Roy was a technical guy, and he had the camera. He'd bring that big, giant camera. This wasn't a phone thing. This had a big, giant camera out, with the, and, and he would record sometimes. And he, he sent, this was years ago. He sent me, he goes, you're never going to believe what I found. I said, what? And he said, I found the first rap battle you were ever in at Mabelville. He said, do you want me to send it? I was like, send it now. And I could see I had this big, giant 80s hair. And, and I was walking through the crowd. There was a big, you know, big group of people all doing And then uh, you could see my hair. <laughs> walking through, through the top. Walking through. And the circle broke like that. And then that was, I, 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 there was something that happened on the inside. Remember, I was, I was timid. I was shy. You want to hear the first lines I ever did? I, I memorize it now. I stepped out, and this was E.T. Fr- it, 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 I, I, the guy was chewing me up and spitting me out, and then it was my turn. I said, I'll take this freestyle, no practice off the top of my head, because I can make a rhyme out of any word that is said. First you take a white man, take a Mexican mother, you let them have a son, and what you got is me, brother. I did that. <laughs> E.T. Fresh was alive. But when I was introduced this morning, It wasn't as E.T. Fresh, because the rap career that I thought was going to blow up, explode, and I would be known as for the rest of my life. Who are you supposed to be? If you would ask me that at 13, E.T. Fresh. Oh, yeah. (laughs) But it wasn't. It was Elijah Tyndall at that time. God was not in heaven looking down, going, oh, he doesn't get it. What's wrong with him? He wasn't mad at me. David, come, David with the harp already. He wasn't, he wasn't mad at me for not understanding all the details. Um, see, because something was going on during E.T. Fresh days. Um, if you would have talked to me before E.T. Fresh days, I was, like I said, shy, timid, fragile. Um, you could have cracked me easily. But in rap battles... You have to be able to grow a thick skin because how rap battles work is that that whoever can cut the one guy down the most and make it rhyme, that's the one that wins the battle. And so I had to I had to start growing layers of thicker and thicker skin, which w- w- I thought wouldn't matter since I never became ET fresh as a lively. But but then a few years ago. I, um, I was suspended from a site called Twitter. And, <laughs> and it, I woke up one morning, and, and I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty neutral. I'm not, listen, you're not, gonna, you're not gonna catch me arguing about politics. You're not gonna catch me arguing about beliefs. You're not, you're, I'm just, that's just not my lane. I'm, I'm just not that guy. That's not my, my piece of the puzzle, okay? Um, if that's yours, rock on, do your thing. It's not me. Um, I, I'm more of a connector and an adapter. I, I'm a bridge between people groups, okay? Um, and, 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 uh, but I woke up, and I noticed there was 2,500 messages uh, on my Twitter. And I thought, that's a little more than usual. <laughs> and it all stemmed back. There was a, there was a celebrity, a, a, a great comic uh, in the movies. I mean, brilliant guy, um, comedically. And he said... He said, uh, he tweeted out that morning, he said, it's, it's, it's sad that some of, the most, uh, some of the most brilliant comedic minds coming out of Hollywood today are still naive enough to believe in God. And then he only attached one name to it, 
and that was my name. And I was like, now, what I immediately heard is, he said I'm a brilliant comedic mind. <laughs> that's, that's what I heard. <laughs> but what his followers heard is, let's get that guy. And so everyone just started going on there and, and, and tweeting just mean things. They were saying mean things about of my, my family, who they didn't know. They were saying, um, it, there was over 11,000, by the end of the day, messages and tweets about me from people who never even heard of me, never knew me, nothing. nothing. Um, there was about 11,000 of them. And then, then Twitter suspended my account for too much negativity surrounding my account. I was like, I've just been sitting here. I didn't do anything. Now, when I get to heaven, when I get to heaven, um, you know, I'm sure I'll be able to talk to some of the martyrs. You were, you were crucified upside down, you say? Well, I, I was suspended from Twitter. <laughs> so, <laughs> boiled in oil? Nothing. I was suspended from, listen, that day, that day when all that happened, it affected me 0.0%, but only because E.T. Fresh existed. You understand the things that you think didn't work out, the weight that you thought was meant to crush you, probably was only there to condition you for what would come later. So that way it wouldn't be that hard and you know that you can get through this thing. Yeah, yeah. So, so I'm not sure what you've looked at in your past or what you continue to look back and in your story or what you're going through right now that you think this, this is the end of all things in your life. This is it. That you, nothing can happen from here. I'm telling you, if you are still here breathing, it's only there as a conditioning weight, not a crushing weight. And people are going to look at your life and say, if they could make it through because they experienced this before, then I can make it through. At no point in your story is God looking down saying, they don't just get it, uh, and he's mad. He's not upset at you. He's not mad at you. You're going through what you're going through, and it is what it is, but it doesn't have to stay what it is. Your perspective and my perspective of what's going on in our life can shift and change, and we can transform. Don't you know that caterpillar that crawls around all of its life has to go into the cocoon? And in the cocoon, it's even worse than the crawling stage. In the cocoon, they literally fall apart. They have a meltdown. They come apart in pieces so that way they can be formed into something else. And when they are formed into something else, listen to this, I doubt that they ever come out flying around, being able to, 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 to transport so much easier, with, with much more ease, with much more beauty. With, I doubt that they ever look back at other caterpillars and say, huh, they just don't get it. Because they know it's part of the journey. Part of the transformation process is us being less judgmental on people who are just living out parts of their journey. They're just going through some stuff maybe that we went through and because we got through and we have a different understanding of it, now all of a sudden we're the police of that thing. What's wrong with us? What is wrong with us that we think that we are, yes, I know we're the righteousness in God in Christ, of God in Christ Jesus, but listen, when, when we're over here and when we walk in the door, we say, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. Our spouse is looking at us like, he was just cussing me on the parking lot talking about blessed and highly <laughs> You know what I'm saying? It's like whenever you, 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 you think you know the right lyrics to a song and then all of a sudden you hear and discover the actual right lyrics. You, you always thought it was, you know, how gray is our God, how gray is our God, sing with me how gray is our God, and you think, that sounds biblical, you know, the gray beard, that sounds like, you know, a Gandalf kind of character, that's, uh, that we think, and then we look at the screen, and like, it says great up there, like, they got it wrong, or they, like, no, that's actually the word, and then, and then all of a sudden, whenever we, we hear someone else singing the wrong lyrics, we're like, I can't believe you think that those are the lyrics. Don't you know it's how great? Read your Bible. 
maybe we stop looking back at other people, whatever they're going through, and say, oh, I can't believe you don't have these wings like I do. Because there's bigger and more beautiful butterflies around us that I surely hope are not looking at us with that same kind of spirit. And I think that's, that's one thing that we're, man, we really need to embrace right now uh, with, with, with uh, unchurched, with church, with people in general. Jesus said, by this all will know that you're my disciples, by the love you show. Not, not, not by anything else, just by the love you show, one for another. And that's the defining characteristic. It's a transformation thing. It's not easy. I know, I know I talk as if it's easy. It's not easy. But the stages of our life, if we'll embrace those things as these were, these were not failures, they're just part of my story, and each thing helped me step to the next thing because I can remember the very next part. Who are you supposed to be? 17 years old. I was called into the office, counselor's office. And uh, they said, you're not going to graduate unless you get three extra credits. This is my senior year. And all my friends, they've got their plan. They're going to college. They're doing all this stuff. I wasn't so uh, gifted at academics. And, and, um, and they said that you can go to this off, off-site course. Uh, they have different, different things. It's a Votech uh, college thing. Um, called Metropolitan Votec. And you can go to that, and you can earn your three credits. It's off-campus uh, half a day. And I was like, you, you had me at off-campus half a day. And so I went there. They let me choose, they let me choose a, a topic of, of what I would study. And I saw radio broadcasting on there. Um, and I was like, I'm going to do radio broadcasting. Now, what I thought radio broadcasting would be would be just playing music, press and play, and playing music. That's what I thought. I didn't realize that it was actual training to become a radio DJ. Now, the problem was, remember I mentioned I stuttered? I didn't mention how horribly I stuttered. Um, I stuttered so bad that my fifth grade teacher literally said this to me. She said, Elijah, I don't know what it is that you're going to do whenever you grow up, but whatever it is, you'll never be able to do anything that requires you to talk for a living. That's, now, she wasn't trying to be mean, but she was pointing out the obvious thing. I couldn't get past the end of my sentences. The more nervous I would get, I'd get like that. You know, I would just, I would lock up. And so here I am, and I know what you're thinking. Well, what about the, what about the, the E.T. Fresh? What about the, that? It worked for that biggity, biggity, biggity. That was fine. <laughs> but radio broadcasting, a DJ, how am I going to do that? And then, and then he, eh, Mr. Bob. Mr. Bob was a classic teacher. He, he, you know, he had the pants pulled up to here. Men make a choice with that, pa- with that waistline. Um, <laughs> we used to do the thing where it gets higher and higher every year. And, you know, in the Hispanic culture where I come from, uh, my nana side of the family, uh, they, they do get high. Like, I, I saw my, my Uncle Jave, you know, probably, you know, I guess four months ago. And he was like, orale, how's the weather out there? Like, is, is it higher and high? Or we do that thing where we just, uh, yeah, but with same, same waistline size as when I was in high school, but we got the big pregnant belly that hangs over it. Like, not exactly the same. <laughs> Mr. Bob, he calls me in, the office to, to, in his office to, uh, two weeks. He would splice the butts off his cigarettes, and, and, and he would put a towel on the bottom of the door so he could hot box us all and, and, <laughs> and not get in trouble. And, uh, and he... <laughs> He calls me in the office. He goes, he goes, he goes, hey, hey, Rock Chuck. That's what he called me. Hey, Rock Chuck. He said, I think you have what it takes to be in radio, which, which means you're ugly. That's what it means. Like, it's, don't let them see your face. Just, and, and he, I, and I said, but, but I can't, but I can't. He's, I know what you're going to say. You have a stuttering. He said, I, I think if you'll let me work with you, if you'll commit to me that you come in early every day, um, and you let me work with you a little bit, then I will guarantee you 
an interview when one comes across my desk. Because, you know, radio stations, with, he's, he's the Votech guy, and so if they wanted to hire someone, they hire him out of the broadcasting school on, on a lower level. He said, I guarantee you an interview. Not a job, he can't guarantee that, but, a, but an interview. And so I applied myself. I would go in, he had me read the paper out loud in the morning time, and he'd say, oh, stop right there, stop right there. He'd stop me on certain words, and he'd notice. He'd say, what does that word uh, mean to you? What does, that, what does that bring up? He was really doing some kind of therapy to me. I didn't even know it. But, but he was, he was bringing up things that would, would lock me up. And they would lock me up, and that, that's why I would start stuttering. That's why I'd start locking up emotionally. And so he helped me work through those things. And then, uh, then he sent me to an interview at a station that, no, there's no way I was going to get a job at this station because this was the number one top 40 station in the city of Little Rock. It was, it was FM 104 KKYK. Yeah. <laughs> The, the job was for being a gopher, you know, go get people coffee, go get people. But it was better than that Burger King job I was working. I got the job. And I was like, what? I'm in radio. Two weeks into that, the program director calls me in and he said, hey, um, he said, you go to that broadcasting school, right? And I said, yeah. And he said, he goes, we need someone to uh, run the board tonight, midnight to 5 a.m., you know, can you do it? And I said, can, can I talk? And he said, you can't talk. Run the board just means you press the buttons, you keep it moving, no dead air. I said, like, okay, okay. And then, and then the next night, same thing. The guy calls in that has the shift, and, and they, they, can you do it? And I said, can I talk? He said, and then they can't talk. Third night, can I talk? He said, you can talk one time. <laughs> I was like, yes. He said, but we got, we got to choose a name for you. We got to pay, you can't go by Elijah Tyndall. This is before, you know, no one was going by real names. And, and so, so, so uh, I, I, he said, I like, I like Walker. I like Walker. It's got a good, you know, kick to it. And I said, what about Jay Walker? And he was like, mm, Jay, that's a, you know what? It's associated with crime. You're shady enough. Let's not. He said, what about Skywalker? And I was like, yes, yeah, Skywalker. Because then I could try to be smooth and say my real name's Skyler. That's a cool name. And I was like, yes. And so 3.12 a.m. Told all my loved ones. They said they were listening. They weren't listening, but they said they were listening. And, and all my friends, 3.12 a.m., I, I picked the song with the longest music intro so I could talk you know, as much as I could. 3.12 a.m. FM 104, KKYK, your number one hit music station, Skywalker, in with you all night long. Got a request, call it in, 433-0107 with Skywalker. <laughs> Skywalker, who are you supposed to be? Skywalker. Yet when I was introduced, only moments ago, I wasn't introduced as Skywalker, did the radio thing work out? Yeah, turns out um, I ended up getting that overnight shift because the guy who kept calling in actually took another job in Florida and was already living in Florida, <laughs> and they didn't know. <laughs> because I'm a weirdo, and people uh, that had overnight shifts would call in and talk to me all night, uh, they, they kind of liked me, and they said, the program director, he moved there from L.A., he was a young guy, and he said, I wonder, you're a, high, you're, a senior, you're a senior in high school, right? And I said, yeah. And he said, I wonder if we shifted you over to the afternoon drive, um, if, if that would work and you could get, like, you know, your friends. I wonder if we get a teenage audience out on the afternoon drive uh, audience. And so they shifted me over to the afternoon drive, and I turned out, it, in my senior year, I turned out to have the number one show on the number one station. And I began the year I couldn't talk. If, if you would have asked me, who are you supposed to be? At that time, there's no doubt. Skywalker. That's it. Yet today, no one knows about Skywalker unless they hear that story. Just Elijah. Who are you supposed to be? Um, let's go back to the revivals. God's going to use you to speak to the nations. I was just a shy, stuttering kid who didn't want to be seen. And when I said I was going to be Skywalker for the rest of my life, God was not in heaven looking down going, no, he doesn't get it. Ah, David, just go away. It's too late. <laughs> God wasn't aggravated because he knew 
that th not only did he know about this part of the story, he knew exactly how he would use this part of the story to open up me and prepare me for the rest of the call and assignment on my life. Not only did God not know about what season you may be going through right now or what season has locked you up and you feel such guilt and shame and embarrassment about, not only did he, he knows about that thing, but he actually knows exactly how he's going to use that. It's a tool in his hand. See, it's a tool in the enemy's hand also. But if we take it from his hand and put it in God's hand, and we transform the way we think about this thing in our life, we realize that, no, that didn't crush me. That made me stronger. That God is my spot in this gym. And he wouldn't put the extra weight on if he didn't know I could lift it with his help. He strengthened me through this thing. Friend, today I came all the way from Los Angeles, California, where God lives, He does live there also. My neighbor's name is Jesus. Um, <laughs> he doesn't pronounce it like that, but it is. Uh, but he sent me here. It's not by, it's not by mistake, not by accident. When, when those guys would pull me out, not knowing all the story, and they'd say, God's going to use you to speak to the nations, this morning is what was in mind. When he was preparing me by letting me learn how to talk and not be afraid to speak in public settings, this morning is part of what he had in mind. Because some of us have conformed so much to what we see in others that we have not embraced that God wants to use our story, who we are, what we bring to the table. Friend, you may be in it right now, but it's just part of, the, it's part of the beauty, the restoration, the freedom that's going to come from what you've gone through because you got through it. Listen, it's not a failure. God's not in heaven disappointed. He's, he's, he's celebrating that you're even hearing this this morning. It's freedom. It's restoration. Does that make sense? I'm going to ask everyone just to bow your head. Close your eyes real quick. The reason I asked you to do this is nothing, uh, nothing weird is going to happen. Um, I just.